Let's get started working with functions. Now functions are a very specific thing and what they do is they work on sets. And a function maps the values in one set to the values in another set. And that's kind of written up like this. The function, so we're talking about a function f, uh, works, uh, maps elements in set x onto elements in set y. So here we've defined two sets. Here's x that contains those five elements. Here's y that contains these 10. And we can have a function that maps these values to these values. And that's what it does. Now notice I've got some words up here. These are words we're going to learn about. Uh, the domain is the set that uh, is the function uses as input. So this is the first the first set. So in this case, x is the domain, right? And then the target is the set that it maps to. And so in this case, the target is y. So we see there's a function that maps x to y, x is the domain, and y is the target. Now, how, there are three different ways that we're going to define a function. And so let's look at the first one. So the first one is a list of ordered pairs. And notice that the way this works is that the first item in each pair comes from the domain. So there's the one from x. And then it says what it maps to in y. So the second value in the pair comes from the target. So here we have a function that maps 1 to 2. It maps 2, which is the next value in x, to 4. It maps 3 to 6. It maps 4 to 8 and 5 to 10. So this is one way to define a function, and that is with ordered pairs. Another way to do it is with an arrow diagram. So here's an arrow diagram. Notice that it tells us the same things, right? It says, oh, here we have a map from 1 going to 2, and mapping 2 to 4, 3 to 6, 4 to 8, and 5 to 10. Notice that this way gives us a little bit more information. Up here, we saw the entire domain, right? We saw every, all the values in x, but we don't, didn't see all the values in y. What we saw was just the values in y that um, were mapped to. This is called the range. So this is another one, right? And it is a subset of the target. And in this case, the range is, let's see, what is the range? So right now, the range is the set uh, it, 2, 4, 6. So these are all the values that are actually mapped to. 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. All right, so that's the range in this particular case. And we see the range in this set of ordered pairs. We also see the range in the arrow diagram, right? We can see that 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10 are all mapped to by this function. But in this one, we also see the target, right? In ordered pairs, we don't actually see the entire target. But in the arrow map, or in the arrow diagram, we do see it. There's one other way that we can describe a function, and that is using um, a description of how the function acts on a, an input. So in this case, uh, when you do this, you have to define the, ex the domain and the target. Like it's really critical. So part of this definition would include these, right? because you, be, you need to know where they are. So as part of that, you would have, oh, by the this is, here's x and y, and this is a function that maps from x to y, and this is what they are. And then the description is simply uh, two, it, the, where f of x equals x times two. 
So notice what this does. This says we can take each value in the domain. So take one and substitute in here. And what do we get? We get one times two. And so the result is two. That's what y is. And this one, we take two, we substitute in there. So f of two is equal to two times two, which is four. And you can really write them like that too. You can say uh, f of f of 1 equals 1 times 2, which equals 2, right? And f of 2 equals 2 times 2. And you can just continue to do this, right? equals 4. And here what you're doing is you're substituting in a value in the set x into the formula. And then it produces that. Now notice that in this first example, I've done a set, I've used sets that are numbers. And I've used a mathematical formula to map, to map from one to other. But functions are not limited to numbers or to mathematical functions. So you might have a function that maps people into a queue. For example, you might have a lot of people coming maybe to a conference and you say, okay, to register for this, if, you're let, if your last name starts with A through D, you go to Q1. If it's from E to G, go to line two. If it's from H to M, go to line three. Therefore, and so notice how that's mapping from a person's first, the first letter in a person's name to which line they're going to get into. So there can be this kind of function that maps from one set, the people, to another set, the lines for registering, that's, that's not mathematical. And that's still a function. And it still has the domain, the people. It still has the target, the lines that are available. And then a way to map from one set to the other.